One of the things I wanted to talk about for a long time is is reference photography, uh, especially for figure drawing and portraits and stuff. One of the modern ways of working is to do something digital and more or less trace over it. Um, you know, this is a pretty common working method with figure painters as well. A lot of painters will project an image, trace it onto their canvas, and go from there. So the likeness is preserved and it's a quick way to, to work. But the problem with photography is that photography shows too much. So looking at this photograph, which is pulled from uh, the Reddit Gets Drawn archives, um, photographs show too much and too little at the same time. So there are some particular things that we wouldn't want, that we would want to take out if we're using this as a reference photo. One of them is these reflections here on the glasses. They're pretty awkward. Um, in terms of an illustration sense. We would probably want to take out or normalize some facial hair here. Um, you can see where areas of the photograph kind of wash out stubble. Um, we would probably want to take out most of the texture in the garment. We could probably uh, change the color scheme here. We could change the necklace. The things that the, um, you know, there's some oddities here in the in the depth of field and focus with the hair. Um, the other thing about a photograph is that in some places it doesn't really show enough of what we want, right? So in a drawing, this whole area around the necklace would be in focus, um, but here it isn't. Um, we would want to do some line work to kind of illustrate some of the facial structure. For instance, um, you know, you want to bring out the facial structure of the nose here. You would want to bring out the structure of the cheekbones and the mouth here. And that's something that the photograph um, isn't really emphasizing in the way that you would want to do in a drawing. Um, this is a pretty good reference photo overall, though. We can do a lot with it. Um, and we may want to do something with the shadow here and uh, change the value and bump up this to make it a more interesting composition. So um, let's see what happens when we start uh, approaching this as a, as a tracing image. Um, and we'll just use black and white for now. Um, probably reduce the opacity of this, uh, this layer down to about 30% or so, 33%, so that it's um, kind of something a little more reasonable. Um, I don't want to have a heavy line thickness at this stage. I'm going to keep it pretty thin. So I'm going to take the, the size down. If you were working in pencil doing something like this, you know, you'd want to use more of the side of everything and draw really softly. So one of the things when I'm approaching a tracing image like this is I don't really care so much about this contour right here. If I just go and follow the contour um, as people normally kind of would, um, I kind of wind up with this flat image. All right, so if I overemphasize this kind of contour, um, this is what I get. It's a flat, blobby shape, right? So I don't really like that. What I do like is to emphasize the um, edges of forms. And the edges of forms go um, inside the boundaries of the head. And what I'd like to think about is drawing a, using line to kind of draw both edges of a form. So if I draw one edge of a form, I want to come back and draw the other edge, right? And that means that I'm going to be drawing literally inside the contour, right? And that means I'm going to be adding a lot more line work than you would normally think to add when you're drawing. And if I know a little bit about anatomy, I can add a lot more interest to this sort of thing because I can start pulling in uh, the facial structure 
and the muscle structure around the mouth especially to kind of create a more interesting piece. So I'm going to go into the, I've gone into the nose and a little, and a little bit of the mouth, but I need to ignore the glasses for now and get some more detail into the facial structure, especially around the nose and around the cheekbone and so on. Essentially this right here is a, is a box form and I can go ahead and actually draw the box as if it's going back in space towards the ear and I can echo the box on the other side. That's going to help me structurally later as, as these kind of drawings progress. I can use little elements of contour to kind of help connect these sort of areas that I've been working on. But I don't want to get overly addicted to the contour because that only helps so much, right? Um, let's see here. And I want to be sure to bridge the gap across the nose and create the bridge. Um, I'm going to avoid the eyes for now and work on larger structures. So as I work into the forehead, you'll notice that if I work on the eye socket, right, I can kind of come around, use a little bit of the eyebrow and some of the wrinkles and bags under the eyes to kind of create where the area for the eye socket. Then over the eye socket, there's a bone ridge that comes up over here and kind of goes around forming this area of the skull. Um, I can also start to divide that bone ridge up a little bit, create some forms there. And I can also follow the edge of the skull up here into the hairline. I can also use some of the hairline to help describe some form as well. That can help a lot. And you know, this bit of this curl of hair is overlapping the edge of the forehead, but I'm gonna draw through it as if I can see through the hair. Then I'm gonna make sure that I do the ear. The ear is basically a cone, right? Starting with the, the hole right here inside the ear. So I can kind of use my knowledge that this is basically a sound collecting cone, almost like a satellite dish or something, to kind of emphasize how this works. And I can wrap some cross contour lines and kind of get ahead of things if I want to. Um, and that kind of works. One of the things about drawing heads is that you want to be sure to get that neck in there. Um, without a neck, you know, it, nothing really works. Um, get the Adam's apple in that form. And, you know, you can't see the sternomastoids very dramatically here, but they're, but they're definitely there. And that can help you define some of the twist of the forms. And you can start to think about how the shoulder gets created with the clavicle. So if I turn off the reference image, I've kind of got a generic anatomical form that's showing up that's in, a, in some ways, in a drawing sense, way more interesting than the actual reference photo. And that's kind of what we want. In the end, you're going to take out the reference and you're only going to be left with the piece. So um, I need to finish out some uh, anatomy of the mouth. Remember with the mouth, I'm just going to work smaller and smaller uh, into the forms and I'm not going to necessarily get into the anatomy of the lips immediately. Um, I'm going to, I'm there now because I've defined a lot of the, of the structures around it. Um, and I can use bits of contour to help. But essentially, I want to make sure that I'm drawing uh, with forms rather than with shapes, um, so that as the drawing kind of progresses, everything r contains a certain a certain amount of dimensionality to it. So I'm going to work into the eyes next, the actual eyes. So I'm going to work towards the eyeball itself. I've worked on the socket, so 
I'm gonna get the eye the eyelids in there first because they kind of cover everything up. And the eyelid itself has some thickness, so you, if you're able to create that, that would be good. And then remember that the uh, eyeball is, is a sphere, it's a ball. So anything you do has to kind of relate to the eye as a sphere. Um, and we'll keep turning off the, the reference image to help things out. And remember, we're just ignoring the glasses for a while. Um, we can put those in over top and it'll work a lot better and be a lot easier than if we decided to do it the opposite way and start with the glasses. Because um, the glasses don't really have anything to do with the structure of the face itself. We can use some of the color change in the eye and the bags under the eyes to kind of indicate some sense of progression of the forms. We can also get into the eyebrows and kind of detail out how they work. Again, we're using that to emphasize that ridge of bone there. And if there's a detail there that, that doesn't emphasize that, then you don't need to include it. Let's see how we're doing. So right now we have a pretty good anatomical study of this figure, but we need to continue on and make sure that the head is complete. One of the things that you're looking for is the crown of the head, which is under the hairline, somewhere up here at the top. Um, and I like to just mark that be, uh, because it's, it can be really useful. Um, the hair, you know, you're, you're going to want to kind of treat it as a helmet with strands. That's like the best way to think of it, I think, that it has its own sense of dimension and its own sense of uh, sort of life to it. And it sits on top of the skull itself. So we can use some of the some of the strands to kind of help describe the form of the hair because they create these really good uh, cross contour lines here, and we can help we can use the overlapping of some of those strands to kind of help create some of the depth here, and we can continue on and kind of make the curl a little bit bigger and more dramatic so that the curl kind of relates to this outer edge. And I think that looks a little more natural than following the weird sort of background hair elements. And then here you can see where the hair gets pretty short. You can kind of echo that in your line work. Make the line work really short. Keep checking, turning off the reference material. Now, one of the things you can do here is those glasses really aren't necessary to create an interesting drawing at all. So I could just leave them out entirely and be happy with that. So I think that's going to be one of the major changes. Um, you know, I don't really care about them. They're, they're kind of a little bit too hip. So um, I also might change like some of the jacket here. I think I might end the shirt like down here below where it normally would be um, and you know I'll use I think I'll use some of the elements of the jacket eliminate the necklace um, just because you know I don't think it's super necessary at this point to create an interesting drawing here now one of the things that's nice about drawing clothing is that you can use the seams and stuff on the clothing to help you out with the overlap in the form. And we'll be able to see this when I turn the reference uh, photo off or change the opacity a little bit. But um, I'm kind of doing a little bit of cross contour work to begin to describe some of the forms.
So there, we have uh, a somewhat interesting uh, portrait developing right here. So I actually like this better than the actual reference photo uh, in a lot of ways. One of the things that we can do is we can we can um, from here we can bump up the the light the sense of lighting um, and develop things in in a different way. Um, maybe we can do a different type of a different type of shirt or something like that. I don't really like the way that this line has kind of wrapped a sort of ring around it. I'd like it to be a little more casual and kind of wrap around the anatomy a little bit more. Um, so I can use it to describe the form. I'll probably wind up thinning out the neck a little bit. Um, I don't like where that uh, intersects the chin right there. So um, you know, do a little bit of erasing. So one of the nice things about digital drawing is that we can work in layers. Um, so on the next layer, what we can do is kind of start to define things and create a sense of lighting.